This video will show how to create a proportional controller to maintain a set distance from a wall. First we'll learn how to control the drive velocity using the distance reading, then we'll calculate the air using a target distance from the wall, and finally we'll end off by adding a proportional gain and learning how to tune it. Now that we've learned about variables and how to use them, I want to revisit some old distance sensing code to make it better. If you recall from the sensing distance video, the last program we wrote for wall detection was this one that drives forward if the distance is greater than 12 inches, backs up if the distance is less than 10 inches, and stops if it's somewhere between 10 and 12 inches. And this works pretty good, but the problem is that we're never reaching a single distance from the wall. It could be anywhere between 10 and 12 inches. But if you also recall from last time, the whole reason we added this little 2 inch zone was so we wouldn't have this back and forth motion if we picked a single value and decided whether to drive forward or backward with an if statement. But let's see if we can fix this by using variables. The secret is going to be using our distance sensor reading to control the drive velocity. So to start things off, I'm going to drag over this set drive velocity block, and then I'll grab our distance reading, and we'll do it in inches rather than millimeters, and I'll set the drive velocity to the object distance reading. After that, I'll just drive forward and we'll wrap the whole thing in a forever loop so that we're always updating our drive velocity and then driving forward. And if we run this code, we see something pretty interesting. The robot drives forward, but gets slower and slower as it approaches the wall. And this makes sense because as our distance reading gets smaller and smaller as it gets closer to the wall, our drive velocity is also getting smaller and smaller, which makes the robot slow down. But I don't want to just drive right up to the wall. I want to stay some distance away from it, let's say 10 inches. So I'm going to hop over to the variables and we'll create a new variable called target distance. And at the start of our program, we'll set our target distance to that 10 inches. I'm also going to make a variable called air. This is going to represent the difference between our actual distance reading and the target distance. So inside the forever loop, I'm going to set our air to the actual distance minus the target distance. And then I'm going to plug this air value into our drive velocity instead. So let's take a second to think about what's actually going on here. And to help out, I made this little table here that shows our actual distance, our target distance, and our air. Our target distance is always going to be this 10 inches but our actual distance will change as we move closer and away from the wall. With an actual distance of 10 inches, 10 inches minus our target distance of 10 inches will just give us an error of zero inches, and our robot will move at 0% speed, which is exactly what we want because if we're already at our target distance, we don't want to move anywhere. But if we're just one inch greater than that, we're one inch too far away from the wall, then 11 inches minus 10 inches is going to give us a 1% speed. For 12 inches, this is going to give us a 2% speed, and so forth. 13 inches will give us 3, 14 inches will give us 4, and 15 inches will give us 5. So we're getting faster and faster as we're getting further away from our target distance. If we look at things the other way though, and have an actual distance of 9 inches, that means we're too close to the wall. But 9 inches minus 10 inches is going to give us negative 1 inches. So we'll move at negative 1% speed, which is going to back us up. Which would make sense because we're too close to the wall, we need to back up. If I get closer to the wall at 8 inches, 8 minus 10 will give us negative 2, so we're going to back up a little faster. And if we're really close to the wall, we'll go negative 3, negative 4, all the way up to negative 5. So just take a look at this final column and see what's happening here. If we start far away from the wall, we'll move faster and gradually move slower until we reach our target distance of 10 inches, where our speed will be 0. If we start from the other direction, the same thing will happen, but we'll be going in reverse. We'll start at higher and higher speeds and slow down until we reach this target distance of 10 inches and are moving at 0% speed. And if we run this code, that's exactly what happens. If we start really far from the wall, we'll move fast towards it and gradually slow down until we're at our target distance. But if we start really close, the same thing will happen in reverse. We'll back up fast and gradually slow down until we stop at our target distance. Now this is great and all, but the whole thing is running kind of slow. So let's work on making it a little faster. To do this, we're going to add a couple more variables, the first of which is a proportional gain, and it's where the proportional controller gets its name from. So I'm going to add a new variable, and I'll call it gain, and at the start of our program, we'll just set it to 5. 
I'm also going to make a new variable called output, which is going to be the final number that we set our drive velocity to. So right after we calculate our error, we're going to set our output to our gain multiplied by our error. And then we'll just set the drive velocity to that output. Now again, let's take a second to pause and think about what's going on here. I've gone ahead and updated our table with a couple new columns for the gain and output, and we're just multiplying our error times the gain to get our output numbers. And if we do that, all of them are going to be bigger. 5 will turn into 25, 4 will turn into 20, 3, 15, 2, 10, 1, 5. So we're still starting at high speeds and slowing down as we reach our target distance, but we'll be doing so faster because we won't be going at 5% speed, we'll be going at 25% speed. And we won't be going at 4% speed, we'll be going at 20% speed. Going reverse, it's the same story. We won't be going at negative 5% speed, we'll be going at negative 25% speed, and so forth until we reach our target distance of zero. And if we run this code on a robot, that's exactly what happens. Our robot will get to the target distance, but much faster than before. Now that we've got all that done, our proportional controller is basically complete, but we can make it better by tuning our gain to make it even faster. So you can go ahead and play around with this number and try some different values. And remember that what you're doing is changing this number in this table here to have bigger and bigger numbers. And these will affect how big your numbers are output to the drive velocity in the end. So if we have a number of 10, all our errors will be 10 times as much for the output velocity. If we do a gain of 20, then all these numbers will be 20 times bigger. And if we look at the effect on the robot, bigger and bigger numbers will mean it gets to the target distance much faster. But there is a limit though, because if we crank the gain up too high to something like 50 or even 100, something weird starts happening with the robot. It's now starting to do that familiar back and forth motion that we were experiencing way back when we did the if else statement. And this makes sense because if we look at our table, it says that if we're just one inch too far or one inch too close, we're going to be moving full throttle towards our target distance. And that's just not enough room to slow down. So we're overshooting our target distance and then moving back and forth. So the secret to a good proportional controller is tuning this gain so you aren't overshooting your target distance, but you are getting there quickly. In my experience, somewhere between 20 and 30 is good for this program. But for now, that's just about it. If this video helped you out, don't forget to click the like button to help others find it, and feel free to subscribe so you can stay up to date with any new videos. Thank you so much for watching.